If it feels like a therapy session, you're probably doing a good job. When your own standards are of a high enough quality and a high enough standard, you will attract the right type of people. You get in what you put out. Simple. Hello. Um, in this video, we are going to talk to you about why you may not be getting an ideal client base um, and what to do about it. Hey guys, we're done a mic. Uh, from Business and Banter, formerly known as Biceps and Banter, which is still a great YouTube channel name. Uh, I'll hear nothing but from you. The great name. It's not embarrassing at all. Uh, <laughs> two, two great men. Given that our email address is always fun. Um, yeah, and we're here today to help you with your online fitness business in any way that we can. And today we're going to talk a little bit around the standards you set for yourself, um, a bit about communication with clients, a bit, a little bit around kind of like how to build an ideal client list and, and realistically what that looks like as well, that, you know, in terms of how many of your yeah. people on your client list are going to be your ideal client, because you hear a lot about that, like, oh, get nothing but your ideal client through the door. Well, probably won't happen, right? But it's kind of like, how can we shift the uh, the, the odds in our favor of doing that? Um, and kind of like what we can do as coaches really to maximize the, um, again, expectations from a client, but I, I guess a little bit around boundaries, a little bit around setting standards, all that sort of stuff. And we'll talk a little bit about social media, but also your communication with clients as well, I think, um, within that. Yeah. Uh, so if you want more advice like this, um, but more in depth, um, with a community forum of like-minded coaches, it's a bit of a no-brainer to invest £99 on a monthly rolling basis for our members group. Mm. Um, because if even one piece of information in there gets you one client, it's paid for and more. Simple. Yeah. So this this came up in, in conversation today with someone that I was talking to, and we talked about like the standards that you set for yourself and, and kind of like putting boundaries in place almost and, and what that can do for you. I think a lot of coaches could benefit from 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 doing this. And it's it links in a little bit to coaches moan about, oh, the clients I'm getting just aren't really good. They don't really stay for very long. They don't really do what I ask them to do. They're they're not they're not hitting their macros, you know, they're not checking in, they're not doing all this sort of stuff. And I kind of have to look inwardly and go, well, what are you doing then? that's making them not do that? Like, are you setting high enough standards for yourself? Like in terms of your content, in terms of your social media, in terms of how you're turning up, is it professional? Uh, and when I say that, I don't mean as in like a, like you're literally super professional. I mean, from a consistency point of view, does it look good? Does it sound good? Does it, is it on brand with your messaging? Is it, are you posting every single day? Are you actually consistent with this sort of stuff? And then does it bleed then into your onboarding and into like when a client comes into your business, do they clearly understand what's expected of them? Do they know the boundaries and all this sort of stuff? And most of the time when I ask that to coaches, they go, oh yeah, no, I don't really do any of that. Right, so you wonder why someone comes in and isn't really clear on what they're supposed to do, isn't really clear on how to check in and actually doesn't stick to things very, very often. Probably because you're not sticking to things that you need to be doing very often. Yeah, absolutely. I say... The first thing um, that you should kind of start to focus on um, will be obviously your social media and attracting the, the right sort of person. Um, but also uh, going back to one of our other videos, which may or may not have been out, don't know what time, you know, what order the, these will go out. But we kind of spoke about showing behind the scenes of your coaching um, and showing that actually your one-to-one -one is kind of premium level stuff can be... Um, can be something that you, you you can implement pretty much straight away. Because what I have seen with people is that they'll get signups who aren't quite sure what it is that they're signing up for. So they'll they'll kind of know that they want to change something, but actually then they come into coaching and it's, it's, it's not quite, you know, what they wanted. Maybe they wanted this or they wanted that or they don't want to do this or they don't want to do that. So actually setting those expectations about what's involved within coaching prior to them coming in is really, really important because, again, with us, we show that we track data, that we do one-to-one -one check ins blah, 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 right? If somebody comes in and goes, ah, oh, I've got to fill these spreadsheets out, well, yeah, you already have the expect expectation of that. And it's actually a selling point for a lot of people that they're coming in wanting to do that. So they know what they're going to get. So then the likelihood that our the clients are probably a better fit in terms of what they're coming in to achieve, right? And how, you know, what methods we're going to use. It would be very, very, very unlikely, for example, that somebody would come into our coaching wanting to call DM, charge up front, um, buy flashy watches. It would be really unlikely. And think about why it would be because of what we put out. So it's very, very true. You get in what you put out. Simple. Yeah, and, and it comes back to a little bit of like, like Mike said about social media as well. I, I'm going to talk about it from a consistency point of view and maybe a branding point of view, maybe a continuity point of view there in terms of like, I, I speak to coaches and think, oh yeah, you know, just not really, you know, these 
clients aren't really checking in. They're not really like, you know, speaking to me much. And I'm kind of like, okay, cool. Well, you can't really sit there and, and moan because you posted three times a week on Instagram. Last week you posted once. You're not being consistent. And I, and I firmly believe that when your own standards are of a high enough quality and a high enough standard, you will attract the right type of people. I think when you start to be a bit hit and miss with your social media, you start to be hit and miss with when you respond to it, to WhatsApp messages or, you know, you hit and miss when you respond to the, the check-ins, well, you expect them to be. Expect them to not take it as seriously because you're not taking things seriously. It, I, I never get this problem or issue from coaches that I know are super consistent with everything that they do. It's funny that, isn't it? The, the coaches that are super consistent with their social media, with their own training, with their own nutrition, with sharing that online, with posting on stories every day, with doing their DM conversations, with making sure that they're posting regular engaging stories, that, that their clients are never the ones that are kind of like a bit hit and miss. It's always the coaches that are a bit, mm, not really posting much good content or don't really know what to post and oh, not really doing that much work or oh, clients aren't where they want them to be. It's funny how it's those coaches that have the ones that don't check in properly, stick around for two months, don't really know what to expect, sort of flip-flopping between certain things, don't really know what their goal is. Well, what standards do you set for yourself? Are you talking about your goals enough? Are you talking about how ambitious you are as a person? Are you talking about what you're trying to achieve with your life, with, with that sort of stuff? Like Mike said, it comes back to sharing your own journey and what's going on in your life. It'd be like us sitting here and saying to you, like... Yeah, you're just not posting enough. You're just not doing enough content. You're just, you're just not really working hard enough. And us sat here going like, oh, well, we didn't really post Instagram yesterday or the day before, or, oh, we've not really posted any client results for the last two weeks. And I sit there with coaches all the time and they go, oh, I've not really had leads come in. I'm like, okay, well, three weeks, last three weeks, how many times have you put out any, any social proof? Or well, none. Right. So what, what, what do you expect then? Like, well, oh, I thought some, oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, looking back, oh, yeah, you are right. I'm always right. Yeah, you are right. Thank you. It's standards. It's how consistently you apply those standards to yourself. In my opinion, it's almost like holding a mirror up and going, well, that's probably the client list you're going to have then. That's my view of it. Following on from that, um, you need to make it clear what the expectations are on your onboarding. Um, enough coaches that I know don't have clear expectations um, have a set check-in day and a set feedback day. I can't believe that yeah. I, I kind of have to say this the amount of coaches that kind of go if you get your checking in before nine you'll get same day um you get same day feedback so then they moan that their clients don't get their check-in before nine because they've accounted for their check-in uh to, to, to be done before nine because the coach wants to do it at, te at nine until 10 and then they want to go to the gym and then because they've had a few lates and that throws them out have clear expectations have a che check-in day and an update day following. So that gives them 24 hours, have clear boundaries of if you don't get your check-in on time and you haven't, you know, forewarned me through extenuating circumstances, travel or personal issues or whatever, your check-in is going to be missed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Done. Expectations, like boundaries, put them, put them in place. So people will want to check in and not take the piss. And those that do, okay. Those that do, fall prey to the consequences they don't get a check-in back and that's it it's simple even like what's included in that check-in like you need to tell them like this check-in it requires photos it requires measurements it requires this the, the amount of coaches just say just check in and then they moan that they got like a 30 second voice note or a whatsapp i'm like well tell them what needs to be done send them a video show them what needs to be included in that video show them all these things explain to them look this is the process again how professional does it look if you just go yeah check in with me or how do i do that oh you know like just send me a whatsapp okay so brilliant well i will then Go through the processes with them and go, this is what I expect. This is what I want. Send them examples of that. Send them their own video first so they kind of know roughly what things to go over in that, in that video that, that you've sent them. You'll be able to explain it all to them in an onboarding video, potentially. They'll know how professional you are based on that one video, that onboarding, right? Of these are the steps. One, two, three, four, five. Do these by this date. This is your check-in day. This is when we're next going to speak and it has to be in by here. Okay, cool. Leave them in no uncertain terms what needs to be done. Because I guarantee you, if you don't, people will assume that that's going to come later on down the line. And when it doesn't, they're going to go, oh, you never really told me. The amount of coaches that moan about miscommunication, but I'm like, it's your fault. You've not communicated with them first. It's not down to them. They've paid you the money. You're the one in charge here. You're the one that provides the service. You need to explain to them how it works. And coaches have this obsession with, oh, well, they signed up this day and they paid, so I've got to get them their plan the next day. Incorrect. Once they've paid, all they need is the expectation. Just tell them when they're going to expect their plan. Yep. That's what you have to do. I don't care if it's going to take you five days, seven days, or two days. Just tell me when I can get it so I can plan it in and I know. Don't just go, oh, I've paid, so oh, I've got to drop all my plans the next day and just go and give them their plan. You don't. I always say on their check-in form, on the onboarding form, I go, 
This is when we're going to have our next call. This is the week you are. This yeah. is when our call is. This is when you need to book in for. Once you've sent me back this stuff, I will then have this video done for you this date. Yeah. If you don't send it to me by that date, it won't be done. Like, but I've planned in that day to do it. That's fine. It's, it's clear as day, black and white. They can't argue with that. And I think coaches have this thing where they worry about speed and getting it done as quickly as possible. Your clients are probably busy people. They probably need some time to actually digest it and think about what you're saying and do all that sort of stuff. So give them time. Don't rush this. Send them that email. Pay this money. By this time, this is when you're going to get this done. Text me if you need anything. Simple as that. That's it. Um, next would be don't expect to have all of your clients check in or be on it or track all the calories and not fall off. Um, you're going to have a, a, a percentage pretty much at, at all times of people that have bought because their friend bought from you or mm. they weren't quite in the right position to do so or things generally just kind of come up. So having the expectation, because this happens quite a lot, is what my coaches go, oh, I've got like five or six clients that are really pissing me off, that did my head in, how do I stop getting flakes? I'm like, that's your job. Your job is to deal with people, so you're going to have to deal with people. Mm. Like, it's that simple. You're not going to be able to identify somebody ahead of time who is, you know, how they're going to act within coaching. That's something for you to figure out. And if you can't deal with it, like, A, check yourself. But B, if you genuinely can't deal with it, have the expectation that if somebody's non adherent to the plan, that they're not going to be invited to be, be retained for the next month or after a certain period. That's fine. So, there is going to be elements of people non-adhering and non-adhering at certain times. We have both had clients for years on end and some people will go through a month or two months where they're not quite at it, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. So the point I would like to make on that is, is that I think if like that, that if that's the expectation that at certain points, maybe people can dip in and out of maybe consistency, which is fine. If it feels like it extends beyond that or you're getting more frequency than that, I'd probably look at how you're coaching them. Like, So I would look at how you're onboarding them and what you're doing at your check-ins to then get the buy-in that they're then adherent or consistent. If you are just turning up and say, do this, do that, you're not explaining why, you're not explaining how it fits as part of a bigger piece of the puzzle, you're not mapping out where the next month or two is going to go, you're not being flexible. If you are just blindly giving somebody a meal plan and they're telling you, yeah, I've got this on a Friday, th that on Saturday, you're going to expect non-adherence. So I would say it probably then comes down to quality of coaching because I think if you were a better coach, you would probably have less non-adherent clients also that's your job coaching is is not it's the coaches that, that sort of slag off meal plans and say that you know you can't just be given a meal plan they're also the coaches that then moan oh my clients aren't sticking to their calories all right well you're a shit coach then because you're just giving them calories and telling them to stick to their calories it's the same as being on a meal plan mm -hmm. and, and they and they slag off the meal plan and then they go oh they're not sticking to their calories um because they ate four bars of chocolate and then they went over their calories because they weren't full okay that's your fault because yeah, you've told them that they can eat whatever they want and lose weight and they believed you, right? That coaching comes down to so much more than just macros and calories. It comes down to understanding the human, understanding that they're going to have periods of inconsistency and non-adherence because that's life. We all have those periods within our life. Even the people who know what they're doing have that. That's your job. You're supposed to coach them through that. You're supposed to do the lowest hanging fruit, the, the next best thing, the, okay, they can't, I get that one all the time. Oh, they don't want to track their calories. What can I do? Well, fucking be a better coach. That's what. Yeah. What? You've never coached someone who couldn't track calories before. I've done it loads of times. Mike's done it loads of times. Yes, it's the gold standard because it makes our lives easier, but it's not the only way. Do you think that everyone who ever lost weight had to track calories? Like, you mental. Like, it, it, that, that, that winds up, because again, it comes back to what we talked about previously, of just laziness. It's just lazy. I just don't, don't want to have to deal with that. Yeah. Well, you don't want to have to, oh, oh, I feel like my coach is just a therapy session. Well, well yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get well, yeah, that. Yeah, well, yeah, because do you know what? Believe it or not, people use food to mask emotions. They use all these things. You've got to deal with a human being who's going for emotions every single day, and you're going to help them manage food around that. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, it will feel like that because you're not just giving out a meal plan because you know more than that. Like, that's what being a coach is. Yeah. Like, so again, it comes back to if you want to be in this game and in this industry and in this world and you want to be a great coach with the great results like we used to get, and I got no problem saying that we've well, got some of the best results in the industry. Well, guess what? It's because we didn't just give someone calories and macros. We did ask them how their family was, how the wedding was at the weekend, what's happened with their, with their family member that was ill how they're dealing with their kids at the summer holidays, they can't quite stick to the macros all the time because guess what? They've got fucking three feral kids around them for six weeks. 
deal with it. Like, I, that winds me up more than, more than most things. Is like, that tells me that you don't actually want to be a coach. Yep. And you, maybe actually you can't coach people because that is fundamentally your job, not giving them the calories to hit. If your expectation is for every client to come through the door, they are perfect fit, they go through the onboarding fine, they don't have any issues, they have no questions, they don't text you, they're checking in perfect on time and they're hitting their macros, essentially you're looking for robots. I was like, if that's your expectation of what your client base is going to be, get real. Like, that ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. so, so do your job. It should feel like a therapy session. And guess what? If it feels like a therapy session, you're probably doing a good job you're probably going to retain your clients longer because that's what they need and that's what they want. They need to understand how to deal with the stress and not overeat. They mm. need to know if they've got this going on and that going on and this in their personal life and that and an action plan of, do you know what? This week, let's take the weekend off. Let's pull back. Let's make sure we hit our steps potentially. Maybe pull down your sessions to three this week. We don't need to hit five. Let's, let's chill. Like That's what coaching is. Like, I, and I don't understand, oh, it just feels like I'm a bit of a therapist. Good, because mm. that's what, co I think coaching, like, I, I don't know whether they think they're getting confused with, like, being an instructor. Yeah. If you want to be an instructor, charge fucking way less if, if your job is just going to be, here's your macros, here's your training plan, stick to that, or charge way less then. Yeah. If you are expecting to be charging... 150, 175, 200, 250, upwards, whatever. If you're expecting to, which are premium prices, by the way, that's not low ticket, fucking low ticket. 175, don't really charge low ticket. No, that's high ticket. Those are premium prices. All right, look at the economy. If you're expecting to do that, expect to be a therapist, expect to be a coach, because that's what people are paying for. And for you to, to film a 10-minute Loom video mm. once a week, right, 40 minutes, that's 40, min 40 minutes, right? And let's just say their Loom videos are like, say, 10 minutes then. So, so basically, you will have spent eight minutes, an hour and 20 on them, and they paid you 200 quid for that month. It's quite a good wage, isn't it? It's, it's quite a good wage for an hour and 20. And that's tops, isn't it? Okay. That's really tops if they're getting a 10 minute Loom video and you're sending a 10 minute Loom video back, because sometimes it's going to be less than that. It's quite good. For giving a shit, right? That's, what, that's ultimately what it comes. But I, I, I remember listening to, um, I know there's a 99. Or United documentary at the moment. And I remember... Um, I, in fact, sorry, I'm just going to cut in. Right, sorry. It's fine. That's so, good now. So, <laughs> so let's just say you are getting paid £200 for an hour and 20 minutes. So let's call it, I don't know, £160 an hour. That's twice what I pay my therapist. That, that's twice. That's, that's actually double what I pay my therapist per hour. There you go. So I, I pay my therapist £80 an hour. So if your job feels like therapy... Right? Well, you get paid twice as much as a therapist. So maybe deal with that. Like, it's, it's like, I don't want to do that level of yeah. stuff. That's reserved for therapy. Like, yeah. therapy charge. You were more than a therapist. Yeah. A doctor. It's, it's oh. bad. And uh, so coming back to that, and like, I, I remember, so Steve Bruce used to talk about this all the time. Because um, he worked in Alex. Clang, worked name drop. Alex Ferguson, didn't he? Clang. Um, and, and I never, whenever you hear about people talk about Alex Ferguson, right, they never talk about the fact he was a tactical genius or that he knew loads about football. The one thing you hear all the time, man manager, knew how to manage people, knew how to manage you know, the players effectively. Like, and it comes back, it's, it's similar to, to coaching in a way, because it is coaching, but in terms of like the nutrition coaching, it's not the nutrition bit that's the important bit here. And it likewise with Alex Ferguson, it wasn't the football that was the important bit. It was half the time getting people to believe in themselves and also managing their emotions and their expectations. Probably people were, were upset they were on the bench, they didn't play or they weren't the main goal scorer, but he still had to motivate them to do a job. Right, he's a motivator of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Is and that's all you're trying to do is you, you. Each one of your clients needs a different version of you. It, they'll need different things. They'll need a, an arm around the shoulder, and they'll need a bollocky, and they'll need all these certain things at different times based on what they're going through in their life. And it's why I could never understand why these fucking mentors talk about the green light traffic light system on check-ins. It just it just blows my mind because it just shows me that they do not have a clue how to coach. Never been a coach. Never been any good as a coach. You can tell that a mile away. Because they're recommending that. Because I know that coaching, even on good weeks, there's something to coach. Yeah. 
right, remember this feeling. Remember this, because when it gets tough, this is what you're going to lean back on and go, look, this is how good things can be when you stick to these things and you're able to do this and you manage the situation really, really well. We're going to have to remember this for when we need a tougher week, when things aren't as good. When I say to you, go down to three sessions a week, like Mike just said, know that you've banked all this really good work for five sessions a week for four or five weeks in a row. You're not going to go backwards from having a week like that. I need you to remember that going forward for at that time. When that time crops up, tell you what, Dan, you're so right, you know, because now I've had this week previously, it would have knocked me off and I would have been really shit. But actually, because of what you said three weeks ago, it's really made me think differently about these types of weeks. I mentioned nothing about fucking calories or macros, did I? No, I coached a human being on how I think they should be coached going forward. Gives you an insight into how we would coach someone. That's what coaching is, by the way. It's managing the human being in front of you in this situation for their goal and what they're doing right now. It's very little about bread or chicken. Our job is very little to do with that. It's really not. Same with the business side of stuff. Arguably, there's elements of it which are so similar to that. It's like, okay, how are you going to keep posting Instagram even when you're feeling shit, when you've had a family bereavement? How are you still going to turn up? Are you, have you got content in the bank? Have you got something you can lean back on and rely on after weeks and months of banked work that you can go there? Or are you making up on the spot? Of course you're going to find that challenging and difficult. Mm -hmm. I'm there preparing you for those times now when things are great. Okay, you're great. You can, put, you can create content every day. Can we, can we create two a day? Oh, Dan, I don't really want to post it. Yeah, but I'm not talking about posting it to a day. I'm posting, talking about creating it so that when you have a week where you can't post as much, have you got something in the bank that you can post so that nothing changes in that week yet you can have a day off? Mm -hmm. That's coaching. I just did that this week. So one of my clients, Jack, um, been a little bit inconsistent for the last month. Um, got lots on. He's um, He works with um, somebody high up in, in Saudi. And basically, it's similar to you. Gets flown everywhere, this, that, and the other. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, so he's been a little bit inconsistent mm. and he was, he, he basically said, Mike, I don't have the time to, to commit to this. I was like, cool, look, because he missed his last, his last call. I was like, look, I'll be flexible with you. We're booking on Monday. Let's see what's what. And I basically just said, look, so you are this busy, right? You are this busy. That's the thing that you can't change, mm -hmm. isn't it? So we need to look at the things that you can change. So how about we now have a set of non-negotiable things that you do? And then a set of things that we do, if actually your, work, your week turn, turns out to be clearer. So now I'm setting him two mm -hmm. different targets because mm -hmm. I'm coaching him. Like I'm saying, right, okay, so have we agreed together that we can do these things? Let's make them a little bit more economical in terms of their production. So let's move away from doing the edited videos of maybe talking to camera or different settings. And actually this type of video is slightly more economical. So mm -hmm. on, a, on a more difficult week, these are the non-negotiables that we both agreed to do in terms of time-wise. Cool. So then I've then given him the second set and go, okay, if your week pans out to be a little bit more relaxed because he doesn't know what's happening from week to week because he can literally just be called up like that. I'm like, if it's more relaxed, these are things to work through as well. Mm -hmm. So whether you get all the way through it, partially way through it, doesn't matter. It is what it is because we'll hit the non-negotiables. That's how to coach somebody. It, yeah, it, and, and it's just... Turn it, did a little talk, turn it around. And yeah, now, and now he feels good. Now feels so good. It's great. Um, but it is, it is that, like, and, and you get that from people that go, oh, I'm not going to sign up right now because uh, I, just, I just don't have the time or I'm a bit busy right now. Well, that time's going to pass anyway. That time, you, you know, you yeah. say it to your clients all the time. When you're busy, it's probably when you should start because, you know, you can learn how to deal with it and how to put it into your, into your you know, busy lifestyle. It's exactly the same with this. It's like, well, you might as well still take action and do the tiny little things you can do so then you can build on that in the future. It's exactly the same thing. Exactly the same. And, and I think too many coaches are... I say just looking for that easy way out with their clients. They want easy clients. They want all the, and then they and then they wonder why with these clients they just drop off after two, three months or, or whatever. And it's like, well, it's because you're not coaching them. It's because you're not doing that 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 you should be doing. Anyway, I think that's enough on that. Yeah, that's it. So like the video, like it, subscribe, and all that shit, all that stuff. Yeah. See you uh, on the next one. See you in a bit. Bye.